Well, Bob, thanks for coming in today. Um, Good to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about how cloud native technology and DevOps culture is changing uh, application development today? Yeah, it's um, it, it really is a, I, I've called it a golden age for developers. Um, we, I, we talk about the three C's a lot, culture, code, and cloud. And there's been, you know, movement along each of those three in, in pretty fundamental ways over the last five to six years and around cloud native in particular the last two or three years. Um, culture is really something around DevOps and DevOps changing how we develop and work together as a uh, development operations team. You see a lot of discussion here at Velocity around DevOps and SRE, site reliability engineering, people focusing on security now, DevSecOps, there's discussions on AI ops, and uh, we've talked about DB ops, even how database comes into that. So there's a whole um, movement around how the cultures change, and that's kind of a people-oriented thing. And then uh, cloud native, in particular, things like Kubernetes and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, um, have really taken open source and democratized that, made it available to you know, things that you know, Netflix uses and Google uses and and Uber and Lyft have used to scale out their web scale infrastructures. Now that's available to a startup, you know, uh, a guy working on the weekends, person working on the weekends with, you know, up on code, a weekend warrior, um, and, and an enterprise too. So uh, this open source technology um, is really taking uh, what has been you know, used by a lot of very web-oriented companies and now is working its way into the enterprise, working its way into startups, et cetera. And then the cloud, of course, is will change you know, how we, where we run our, our code, where we develop it, where we build it, et cetera, and given us sort of infinite scale, elasticity. So in many ways, you know, it changes you know, the technology, the people, where we run, how we run. So it, it, just these fundamental changes all kind of build on each other and create this huge opportunity, I think, for uh, developers and, and enterprises to really go to the next level. So, And what would you say some of the main challenges enterprises are facing as they try to yeah. adapt and to uh, you know, use these tools and processes? Yeah, you see it a lot in, in surveys and in discussions that anything that revolves around people and culture, uh, the number one issue is cultural change and uh, you know, trying to help teams uh, move enterprise teams, you know, adopt new processes and new ways of working together. That's probably the biggest issue, and you see it o repeated over and over, over and over again. It's not necessarily the technology issues. Um, we've gotten really good in the cloud native and the container space and of beginning to fix those around security and networking and monitoring. Um, but it's the people issues around uh, culture. Um, complexity is another huge issue too. You know, there's lots and lots of tools, um, and um, we're putting more tools and complexity on top of complexity. So as people are trying to make this cultural change, this transition, they're also having to learn more and more you know, technology at the same time. And sometimes people try to simplify you know, their uh, approach by using a single cloud, which ends locking them in. About a year later, they're locked in, they're painting a the corner, they can't get out. It's kind of a uh, exact opposite of an open strategy. It really limits your choice, limits your agility. So. Um, those are some of the key challenges that, that, that people are, are facing, both on the people side and the technology side. So. And how would you say the cloud native community is addressing some of these challenges? You know, we talk a lot about you know, taking a, a more open approach uh, and really trying to drive to a multi-cloud future, uh, trying to be uh, more inclusive. And I think this is an interesting one where you can begin to look at how do you bring enterprise teams in using some of the new uh, approaches for example, with Kubernetes, where you can build an operator that you could run. Uh, for example, um, Oracle has a large web logic and database community. Um, you can run web logic applications on top of a Kubernetes operator and allows you to, you know, from context you know, this is like an on ramp into cloud native. Um, uh, Java teams, uh, we've recently open sourced a, uh, a framework called Helidon, and Helidon uh, helps Java teams adopt microservice frameworks and deploy those in the cloud using containers using Kubernetes. So you know, you have Java teams, we have enterprise web logic teams, even database teams uh, can start using, uh, we have new autonomous database services in the cloud, which automate a lot of the database administrative activities, but they can connect into an Oracle Cloud service broker uh, that gives you access to all the Kubernetes cloud native technology. So you can you know, improve performance, lower cost, but you can also modernize your architecture. We're trying to find these on-ramps 
where you get your more inclusive. Um, they're more sustainable because they're managed services. You don't have to do it all yourself. They're, that we do handle all the complexity for you. So I think those are all things being more open, sustainable, more inclusive, and finding these these on ramps and easy ways to get on the cloud. So. Mm -hmm. So how would you say Oracle is helping its customers move to cloud and cloud native tech and culture generally? Yeah, so you know, a lot of it comes down to you know, focusing on you know, you know, context and um, you know, on-ramps that help people you know, not having to learn it all themselves. You know, the complexity issue is that there's so much to learn. First of all, um, you don't have to, right now, learn all this technology and deploy it yourself in a DIY mode, do it yourself. You can use a managed service and the managed service actually handles all the complexity for you. You could use some of these different techniques, brokers, service brokers, operators, API gateways that integrate into the things you already have. So you don't have to build it all from scratch. It's not a greenfield application. And primarily, most of the enterprises have a lot of install based applications and they have data gravity, they have governance issues, they have regionality issues where they can't move it. So these are complex problems that need to be solved. And that's kind of the next wave, I think, for cloud native. We've gotten really good at helping the unicorns and the big you know, the web scale companies be successful. And um, they get up on stage and have some great use cases. But it's the, the enterprises that have healthcare applications and finance applications and, and oil and gas applications, where these are things that are you know, utilities that uh, support a lot of people currently. They can't move quickly, uh, but want to move to the cloud for uh, uh, optimization issues for efficiency issues to lower costs, but also to modernize in the process. And that's where the cloud native technologies come in to help you not only move the application to cloud, but improve it and actually uh, uh, modernize what you're doing in terms of the overall architecture of the application. So what would you say is next? What's on the horizon for application de development? What's, what's in the future for it? Yeah, I think you know, there's some really cool stuff that's happening in big data and machine learning. And you know, as we uh, start taking all that data and all the learning that comes from that, I'm seeing some really innovative use cases coming out of startups now where they're looking at um, taking advantage of all this high power compute that's available to them now and doing things you're never able to do before in terms of um, analyzing data at high speeds and streaming formats um, and then distributing that out maybe out to the edge. And a lot of, uh, you see Internet of Thing applications where you're getting more information out to the edge with smart devices. So that combination of sort of the cloud native technology running the, um, optimizing the clusters and sort of democratizing the core, but also finding ways to access the data and get it out to where it, where it matters. I think that's the next, the next wave after this, uh, the current sort of cloud native focus that we have now. Accessing the data, getting it out to the edge, taking advantage of all the machine learning and all the power that's now available uh, that wasn't ever available before, so. Great. Well, Bob, thank you for sharing your insights okay. today. Well, thank you. Appreciate it.